Hello everybody, Danny from Deep South Homestead here. Uh, we're beginning to put the sills underneath the cabin at this point. Uh, we've already got the first one screwed up across there. We're going to be putting this one on next. We're going to be doubling everything because this is what actually coats the load of the cabin. The floor joists and the rim joists will be sitting on top of these. So we're going to take you along and let you see how we install these as we install them. We're going to crown this board when we look down it we see that the arch is in the upward position here the the high part is on this side over here so this will go to the top this will go to the bottom and the reason we do that is so that when we put the load on it it will actually push the crown down and actually straighten the board out if we flipped it over the other way to start with it would already have a sag in it and when we put the weight on it it would just make it sag even even more so we always take a pin and I put an arrow pointing up that lets me know which side has the crown on it in case I grab the board and happen to forget which way it is. Okay, what we're doing here is we are we have put our seams over the tops of our blocks and we're staggering our seams over the blocks so that we don't have two boards butting together at the same time on top of the blocks because if you do that what you end up is a weak place in your uh, seals that you're putting down.
guys we're we're at the point now we're beginning to put our rim joist on the bottom of our floor here we have them installed where they go at on top of the sills that we've installed here now what I'm fixing to do is show you how to get a layout for floor joist on a 16 inch center what we want to do is hook our tape measure on the end of our board and we want to come 15 and a quarter and set ahead we want to come 31 and a quarter and set ahead 47 and a quarter and set ahead and so on throughout the whole uh, when I put the uh, when I put the X the X is where the board is actually going to be going we know when we put this mark that that board is going to sit on that side that mark when we get to this mark we got the X says the board sits on that side and so on down the uh, rim joist that we have here there's marks all the way down it laid out on 16 inch centers now what we're fixing to do is pull the measurement across this uh, cabin. We're going to take a measurement on this end, we're going to take a measurement on that end, and we're going to take two or three measurements in the middle to make sure that all of our floor joists are exactly the same length so that we have a straight line on each side. things that you have to pay attention with when you're using these treated lumber like this especially large lumber 2 by 10s 2 by 12s and stuff like that the standard width is nine and a quarter inches but occasionally they'll go to nine and a half this one is nine and three quarters inches wide so what we've done we've marked it right here we was going to cut it but we decided to go down our rim joist here and see if we had any places in the rim joist that was nine and three quarter and we do so we're going to take and actually instead of cutting this and off we're actually going to move it down and use it where that rim joist is actually nine and three quarters of an inch at because none of this lumber is dimensionally accurate anymore okay guys now we've got all the floor joists in up to this point right here we've got to make some changes because what's happening is we have a fireplace going in the center of the cabin on this end down here it's the one that we took out of our house it is uh, it sticks outside the house 32 inches by 5 foot 1 inches wide is the area I have to have so rather than going and pouring a whole concrete area out here relaying blocks and trying to block it up and all that kind of stuff I'm going to do it like I used to do houses that were two-story houses that had balconies sticking out with no post under them I'm going to cantilever the floor joists. 
And what you do whenever you do that is because this is going to stick out 32 inches from the house, I have to have double that inside the house. So what I'm going to do is change the direction of my floor joist here and we're going to stick in 64 inches and only stick out 32 inches here. And we're only going to do it for the area that's five foot one inch wide. We're going to come out that distance. Once we get that done, we will come back and we will double the two by 10 where we just nailed to. We will double that and it will become a header back there. And then we will take and go ahead and fill in the remaining part of the floor joist is on the side right here to, uh, to continue on with the layout in the house. I know it may sound a little bit difficult right now, but as you see us build it, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay, anytime you're taking a measurement for like out in the center of a floor like we are, you don't want to hook onto your joist out there because that joist, see how it wobbles back and forth? That will give you an inaccurate reading. What you want to do is you want to always take your measurements from over here on the side where it's nailed at. We want to measure from there out to here and get that measurement and then add the 32 to it. That will give us an accurate length for these uh, cantilever joists that we're going to be sticking out. Okay, now that we've got this one nailed at the first place, we have marked on the end down here. In order to keep that board straight, we knew that the measurement from the end over here at the end was 63 inches. So we came here and we marked 63 inches and put us a line down here. What we'll do is, because this is straight, we're going to move the line to the edge of it like that. And we're going to nail this on the layout that we have here on the board. And what that should do is that should leave that board straight back there so that we don't get our boards crooked. Okay. This is how the process will work. We will continue to put our other four boards in here. This will give us a platform out here for our fireplace to set on. And because it's got twice the distance in there that it does out here, uh, the cantilever action of it should be perfect once we double the tube of tin back there. It shouldn't matter how much weight we put on it, it should hold it from that point on. We are at a point now we have to we have a load bearing wall in our house and it is not hitting on any of the joists here so what we're having to do is we're having to double uh, two tube tins together to create a girder underneath for the load bearing wall in the house to sit on and that's at a 10 foot place here we have it marked on our boards here where the center of our wall is and our wall will actually sit right on top of this here rather than have it just sitting on plywood out here and the plywood sinking down we'll have a girder underneath it all the way across here so we're fixing to install it we've already cut it and nailed it together because it would be too hard to get in here to nail it on the sides there's just not enough room so we went ahead and nailed it together out here and now me and Wanda's going to take it and we're going to put it around and see if we can't drop it down in here and get it nailed
Okay guys, we've got the girder installed now for our wall to sit on. So we're ready to begin our bridging in between the floor joists. And the thing that we've ran into is that plywood now says it is four by eight sheets of plywood, but it's not really four by eight anymore. It's 47 and seven eighths inches long because you have to leave an eighth of an inch gap at the end for expansion and contraction on the flooring. The width is not 48 inches anymore. It's 47 and 5 eighths of an inch is the coverage of it. Even if you leave the eighth of an inch that they're asking, you only end up with 47 and 3 quarters. If I take and do 4 foot, measure 4 foot all the way across this thing, by the time I get to the other side, my plywood's not even going to hit my bridging when I put it on there. So I've got to compensate now by measuring the actual measurement of the plywood, which is 47 and 5 eighths of an inch to the center of my bridging, which is totally aggravating because by the time I get to the other side of a 16 foot wall, I'm going to be lost an inch and a half off of, or close to two inches off of my plywood, which means I've got to rip a treated strip of two by, or one by four and put on that other side just so that I have something for my wall to sit on. It's just aggravating knowing that companies do not give you a true four by eight sheet of plywood anymore. So we're fixing to pop our chalk lines and get ready to do our bridging at this point. Okay guys, we've got all the blocking in now. You can see we've got a checkerboard pattern here in front of the fireplace because we've got a lot of tile going there and stuff. We don't want the floor giving and the tile cracking in any way. We've got a lot of stone work going up on this wall, so we want this area to be strong. We have the cantilevered part out for the fireplace. And we have all of our bridging in for our plywood so that we don't have any bowed edges. Even though it's tongue and groove, I like to have something for the tongue and groove part to sit on also. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.